Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another edition of Hot Program. I am your host with the most all the way from the East Coast. And as always, folks, I am in... airplane mode and now a man who accepts that we can't live forever but we can live for each other a man who's clearly trying to run for office and steal your vote <laughs> how you doing today my <laughs> one black friend <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's that, that is that is the, that is that atheist appeal. If you ever called out when you're running for office and and they say, "But I don't, I don't know if I can vote for you because you're an atheist." That's what you hit him with. That's, that's what I hit him with. That's what that's what you hit him with. That'll, well, that'll do it every time. <laughs> they should they should be into it. If I say that to them, they should be into it. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. I, uh, I'm well, um, that comes from, uh, that's inspired by me talking to one of my neighbors who recently had surgery where he got a defibrillator and a pacemaker installed and he just wasn't feeling too hot. And his wife said, can you come over and talk to him? You know, we haven't seen you in a while. And I was sure. And I was over there for like three hours last night. So, um, it was, well, it was a you. nice time. Yeah. I got good to spend some you. time with other neighbors too this week. And so it was, that's been nice. How about you? Yeah, How you doing? I, I, I'm, I'm all right. I have not I have not spent much time with my neighbors, but no? my 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 Michigan neighbors. But but the same cannot be said of my digital neighbors. And and speaking of digital neighbors, probably the 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 the, the sailor that lives next door is is here to see us, and that is of course the famous the now well the 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 sir blew past the 300 sub mark the now famous <laughs> stephanie catherine helms how you doing today steph the, the girl who will live in infamy i guess that's me yeah doing all right doing all right doing all right yeah really really happy that uh yeah that's that's kind of fun and you also had and, a video uh, that really went appreciate viral being here today it was fun. you're Steph, you've had a video that I would have to stitch a whole string of videos together for the match the view count. <laughs> well, you know what, what was that you video? Never, you, you never know what the what the algorithm will do with something. It was uh, basically a, a tribute to uh, John Gleason and Forrest Balkai for handling a, a particularly troublesome call that I call screened last Sunday on the line. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lions Lake Show. So it was the guy who gave his pronouns as attack helicopter. And, and you know, that's kind of troublesome. And the producer, I just put in no pronouns given, but the producer, Morgan, passed along that that was what the guy's pronouns were. And Forrest saw that, mm. and the guy wanted to talk about God, but Forrest wasn't having it. And neither mm. was John. It was good. It was It was the kind of thing where... We've been arguing and talking about God and other gods and this God and that God and my God's better than your God and we can we can put up this sacrifice or that sacrifice and blah 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 for ten thousand years. Mm -hmm. We still haven't come to any sort of resolution, but so long as humans decide that they're going to treat each other shitty in this world, regardless of which God rules it or if none do, maybe we should talk about that instead. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. All right. And Steph, so you... I clip, I clip that and send everybody by by all means. It's it's uh, uh, check that out on the line. And you know, if you want a a, a pricey of it, you can take a look at the video I did on it. But okay. yeah. very cool. And uh, I think you're paired up uh, channel wise, Steph. But if you're 
not, I think so. um, there's a link in the description to Stephanie's channel. So go ahead and make sure you're you're subbed up over there. All right, gang. But Steph is not here, believe it or not, to talk about that today, gang. I've I've just got to confess to you what's going on today. Okay. And and, and the confession starts with this. A lot of times what we do with this counter apologetics, it's bullshit. <laughs> And we, it's just, it's just the same old thing, the same old story, the same old bad arguments time and time again. And it can get very tedious and frustrating. But every once in a while, every once in a while, something genuinely glorious happens. Something that you needed that you didn't even know you needed happens. And and you go, oh, oh it's counter apologetics for the win. Oh, oh, today this is the right thing to be doing. And we have one of those occasions to share with you. Oh my goodness. Um Steph, go ahead and, and tee this up, and then we're going we to go ahead and get into this. Tell, tell people what we're talking about today. Well, you know, uh, first of all, kudos to Alma Tadero, who pointed this out last night on my live oh, stream. Oh, yeah, thank have, you, have you, heard about, have you heard about the sword swallower? It's like, what? <laughs> uh, the, yeah, the sword swallower. <laughs> yeah, okay. At the Christian men's conference... I was like, Sword Swaller? Christian Men's Conference? This is kind of strange. So I Googled the thing and oh my God. Well, it wasn't the you only fans the version folks. for those who. <laughs> uh, when you see what we see, maybe. I saw you it. I saw it. I saw it. I didn't um... see the entire conference, but I saw that performer. Yeah. Oh my goodness! The guy, all right, well, the guy was first of all the guy is uh, very buff. Let's just put it that. Let's way. show the let's show the people. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's get the let's get the hang. On. Let's get the view right. Switch me and Stephanie. All right, here we go. Did y'all hear about the men's church conference that had a male stripper? Oh, we in white folks church business today. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> All right, this is the Stronger Men's Conference, okay? They had a male stripper, they had monster trucks, they had fire, they had everything, okay? So the stripper man, okay, he ripped his shirt off. He does his, like, he don't strip in the sensual way, but he got his shirt off and he, he, he climbed a pole with a sword in his mouth, okay? Got the sword, put it down his gullet, Deep throat in the sword of the spirit, he goes up the pole. Right, Steph. Deep throat in the sword the, the, the in the focus, spirit. The focus here is rather weird because the, the, this guy is saying the male stripper. Well, yeah, but he didn't really strip. You, he, he's a sword swallower. You take off your shirt when you want to swallow a sword because you right. want to show the show, audience. Yes. That you, He's not. He's, he didn't take anything off other than his shirt. Now, which I didn't understand. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steph. No, no, you go ahead. I mean, that's no. I, it's, I'm, it's it's that simple for me. When I watched the performance, I'm like, why did he take his shirt off? What's the point of that? What is oh that no, it's, it definitely it definitely helps to show the the legitimacy of the sword swallowing that you're not sticking it into like a weird contraption. Oh, that you're not that hiding you know. it. That you're not yeah, hiding yeah. it. I see. Now, now I to, see. Be, I didn't now to be fair, um, people based off the aesthetics and what he's able to do, for instance, with that pole, I think is what led people to say, okay, this person probably has a, has a background in, you know, as a, as a, as a, at least, as at least pole dancing. Right, so they either mm -hmm. they either have a background in, in 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 doing that professionally or recreationally. Let's put it that way, you know, because some people do it just for exercise. So we want to we want to allow for that possibility. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I had a neighbor but I, who, who but taught I think, dancing. Yeah. yeah, but I think that's that's where yeah, but but still very impressive, you know. I like, wish I was okay. that strong. I'm I'm not. That's yeah, the facts. Does a death drop. The men are like, this is great. Eagles, beers, ha! Okay, <laughs> comes down, <laughs> fire and monster trucks. So 
So then this new man, Pastor Mark Driscoll, he get up and he don't like it. He got something to say. I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason wow. I'm forced is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened Ooh. for you. Oh, he, he, that's, gang, we talk, we talk a lot on this channel, pastoral field trips. I'll be talking to you about that, right? That's when the pastor goes and do goes on a little trip and gets builds up a whole story that he can then work into his sermon. Okay, this is this is basically the same phenomena, but it's like the handicap principle. He's like showing you that he really played the cost. So he he was like, I was really up all night and I was praying for you. He, he couldn't pray for them quietly all night. You know, he had to pray in his strongest most vocal voice and so now he wants the hoarseness to speak to you he wants you to understand that he's he's so and 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 look at the posture he's down on one knee this is this is like serious pastoral signaling that's going on right now and i want to be very careful with this and it's not what i want to say but the jezebel spirit has already been here <laughs> Jezebel spirit. Jezebel spirit. Jezebel. Now I love a good rebuke, not rebuke. He said, I'm hoarse because I've been praying for y'all. Exactly. So Jezebel spirit opened it up. So he goes on, and then another pastor didn't catch his name. He didn't want to get too deep into the white folks' business. But he <laughs> tells him, You're done. You're done. He doesn't know that I got a stumble. He And then he swallowed a sword. And Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Not today, Driscoll. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, hang on. <laughs> Pastor John, I'll receive that. He was like, <laughs> that was, that was more, more, we more locker about. room talk between those two. We didn't focus too much on that interaction, but yeah, that's a very profound interaction. And I got jealous. I was like, damn, why can't we shut down apologists like that? Right? Well, they let's just, try, let's give it a whirl. Yeah, they just they just <laughs> literally hit it with the mark, you're out of line. Mark, you're done. I'll receive hey, that. Hey Turk. Hey Turk, I'm not gonna let you stand up there and lie to people. Get off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the door. <laughs> yep, there's the door. Can you imagine somebody does that and just goes, I'll receive that. <laughs> just oh, yeah, waddles, I'll receive that. Just waddles off like a penguin. That'd be amazing. He's like, I, re I received that. I'm gone. Because I don't want to have no part of the Just Bell spirit anyway. And I'm <laughs> now, now, wait. I love wait, good that's, stuff too, so late. Can you pause it, Pocket Locker? It's too terrifying. That's right into his persecution narrative that he needs to show that he's doing the work of the Lord. That's that's it. It's, it feeds right into it. He got what he, yes. I don't know if he wanted it, but he he got he got that's better than getting paid for him because he can milk this for decades. WWE Church begins. Toto now, thank you so much. Plus, uh, I think he was probably <laughs> he was probably maybe a Driscoll expecting, or I don't know, like you know, people to like be cheering him and applaud him and be with him. And once and once they they started going at him. He was like, "Oh, they all the way turned out for this." Like, I'm well. He, he he's making like a, it's in a share a poll. I'm like, it's not, it's not. So again, he's he's sort of building. It's a ball from Sarah McLaughlin. He's building the lie, right? That makes him seem more righteous. He's gonna put everybody on the proper path now after they've been misled, you know, led astray by the events um uh, of the day you know he didn't talk about driver safety when it came to the monster truck did he yeah actually you know we'll that? get we'll uh we'll get more into that so but uh, go ahead Steph. I, i'm a little so curious got the video coming like, out. Oh, where is this where is this jezebel spirit coming from anyway this isn't this is a men's christian con christian men's conference where's jezebel in all of this seems to me this guy was <laughs> A uh, guy. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, what's up with that? I mean, the, the the thing that's weird to me is these guys are reacting exactly as if this was a drag show. And yes. it's weird. It's just really weird. So you're saying a few of them are oddly turned on? 
Some are outraged I'm and others are speechless. There might be some, I am saying that there might be some slick willies in the audience. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that. <laughs> I'll take down. your word for it. I wasn't there. We get down, I, mean, I don't, wasn't there either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see this. I love a good Cirque du Soleil. I go down to Las Vegas. The man is talented. My wife, we get down our pictures and, and our uh, video of the Cirque du Soleil. They do fire and swords and stuff. I ain't never seen it at a men's conference. I, ain't never, <laughs> I, I thought when I heard this, I was like, oh, I thought it was going to be a women's trip. And, oh, man. But the thing is, it's called the Stronger Men's Conference. The male stripper is showing you he's strong. He's got That's core true. strength because Jesus That's is right. at his core. And he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. There it Say is. It, preacher. Going Say it. Hole with a sword in his mouth. Because he's a stronger <laughs> we man. We men couldn't do case. it. So do y'all want him to be on theme or not? Now what the monster trucks have to do with it, I don't know. I don't know how he got monster <laughs> trucks in the whole situation. But I don't care either because I like monster trucks. Never seen him inside a church. Only seen him at a monster truck rally. But the devil is a monster. He'll be rebuked, cast down. So let's 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 blow up the And roll over. over. Why is the fire there? He's with it. He's with it. Yeah, there you go. It's just not. Yeah. It don't. It don't have to be that. It don't have to be that hard. All right, Charles. So it's, look, it's good to have people interpret things for us, other than the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> so look, that's the that's that's what we wanted to show y'all to cue it up, so y'all know what's going on. And of course, what we really had to talk today is about is that this is. That's why this is so good, y'all, is the gift that keeps on giving. Because of course the the all the, the Christian internet was gonna react to this. And again, it just it just keeps getting better because now we get them in, in panic mode. Um, I would like to I would like to coin the term from Christian internet, Christian internet. <laughs> Christian internet. Yeah, Christian, Christian internet. internet. Christian internet. There's there's some there's there's some potential there. There's some mm -hmm. potential there. Many of us had this on our 2024 bingo card. Mark Driscoll gets tossed from stage at men's conference after calling them out for hiring a male pole dancer to open the conference. What? Yeah. In this video, we're going to talk about not only what happened, but maybe some lessons that we can learn. If we've never met before, my name's Brandon. This is Preach and Lead. Normally on this channel, I'm making videos for pastors and church leaders on how to preach faithfully and lead intentionally. So if that's something that you're interested in, then be sure to subscribe. And also as a gift, my way of saying thanks for being on this video, if you're interested in it, obviously, uh, you can go to preachandlead.com slash guide and get your free 10 step guide to writing a sticky sermon. It'll help you go from blank a page to finish sermon, sermon, the whole process. It's a, a great resource sermon. and encourage you to go to preachandlead.com slash guide. Get that today. Going. Okay. Let's yeah. get into what is going on. A lot of the, a lot of the reactions in the all. crowd. It's a pole dancer. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> With this, oh, I figure exactly instead right. of me reading you a story about what happened, it'd be better if you could just see what happened. Again, this is at a Christian men's conference, y'all. This Break is how they down. opened the conference. Break it on down. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, he's skywalking. Wait, oh, is this how Jesus split it on him? That's how Jesus walked on water. It's got to be the same. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Oh, my goodness. He needs the sword out. Look at this. He takes this a sword, proceeds to put it around. in his mouth, he's working that sword, and then he's gonna climb this pole. Hmm. Just get to the point. Ugh. Woo! No bueno, man. For a good time. And then he's gonna, he's gonna climb all the way up to the pocket For a locker. Good time. Do we have a video clip of Damon Wayans and David Allen Greer responding to this <laughs> as did. the two guys are men on film? Oh my goodness! This big sweaty man here. <laughs> you you already you already saw what black folk think about this. <laughs> <laughs> saw what one thought about it. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Go ahead, wow. Steph. 
Oh, good. Right. Yeah, uh, control yourself, Stephanie. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so this is how the conference started, right? This is what happened the next day when Mark Driscoll comes on to the stage as part of the conference. I like how the guy said, this is how it started. I'm like, there was no greeting. Well, that's why we had to show you all the other video, because he, he, he ain't show all the good parts. We had to show you a little, little bit of extra footage in there. That man was working. But let me do this. Um, look, look at him get down, took his hat off. I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm forced is I have been praying for you and my heart. What a sell. What a sell. So what Driscoll is saying were the original words to the Sermon on the Mount, but they the the editor said this isn't gonna work. <laughs> Jesus, gotta write something else. He's <laughs> definitely trying. Does that say? And it's not what I want to say. But this is stinkers. Overwhelming Jezebel sense of impending doom. doom. The Jezebel spirit opened. That Jezebel spirit. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open. There was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit. Hey, Katina. What I like is the applause. <laughs> yeah, he like said the that. Applause too. <laughs> that's well, you know, like half part of the audience is applauding. The other part of the audience is looking for those two dollar bills. They, just, this place somewhere. I don't know where, but I got all these things with pictures of Thomas Jefferson on them. <laughs> I, I, I do wonder if someone was shooing people away from rushing the stage like this is not an altar call like that's not why i'm here <laughs> i got money i got money at a strip club that man then ascended see our god is not arrogant he doesn't us say our god is humble he descends he is arrogant you have to read the entire then, bible he <laughs> the sword and you got it. You heard a guy go, "Not my God." He said, "Not you my know, God." Or how am I gonna fly? Fucking, Mark? How do you fucking find a Bible verse in a fucking poll? Now, mm. if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you don't believe that Christ died on a cross. You do believe he died on a pole. So maybe I don't know. We'd have to check with the central authorities on this sort of thing, but. It's just weird. It's just weird. If you dig, if you dig long enough, Stephanie, things are connected. I think you've mm -hmm. cracked it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. <laughs> I'm out. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> you hit him with now. Okay, so this why is the applause? You get, uh, he, he obviously addressed what happened. Are they applauding because he's leaving or because he spoke out and stated his opinion and he had people in the audience that agreed with him? No, I think I think they're applauding because he's leaving. I think they they were having a good time and he, he came up there trying to try and again there's always these people in Christianity. I always say they wanna they they wanna play Christianity on hard mode, right? <laughs> and when things I'm serious, when things get fun or people are having too good of a time, they always want to bring that down because they to them it's that they they are they put forth the long suffering model. Hey, look mm -hmm. at my people my people didn't even want people to celebrate Christmas. So there you go. You gotta remember wow. this is why a lot of churches yeah, there is churches that don't even want to celebrate the holidays like that. But there's churches that, you know, when you go to their worship, like when they don't have instruments or they don't have drums or a lot of that stuff, it's not that they can't find musicians. It's that they literally have made a strategic decision to, like, not be charismatic. And they will literally tell you that they, they will, literally like, deride charismatic approaches to the faith in front of you.
when I say my people, I'm talking about the Puritans, right? It mm. was it was illegal. Like our founding fathers, they, uh, the war on Christmas. Well, you know, the war on Christmas was, began with was John fucking Winthrop. <laughs> well, a lot of a lot of thirty. <laughs> A lot of Americans don't understand that Christmas used to be outlawed in this country. Well, in the in the in uh, in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, it was. Yeah. So, was... but what uh, they they know what's a little about or what's going on now, and not really the wide history of their own faith. Happened, and obviously did not agree with it. And then you kind of hear somebody off camera um, say something, and then Mark responds with, Pastor John, I'll receive that, and proceeds to grab his stuff and get off stage. This next video shows what happens next. Pastor John, I'll receive that. I'm Jesus Christ. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Angelic here it says, Angelic you're done. Angelic Disorder in the house, here. Whoa. Oh no. Obviously you see a a very unideal situation if you're the leader of the conference. Um you planned this, you did did made the decision to have a former stripper, um male stripper open your conference with a sword swallowing act of acrobatics right um so that was your choice you did that and then one of your speakers comes up and criticizes that he, he called him off of the stage and then i think this is just when it comes to how can you lose credibility with people in 30 seconds that's what happened with uh john the the gentleman who is in charge of this event um James River Church in Springfield, Missouri. This is what he does. He calls him off, and then the crowd is not on board with that because it seems like the majority of the people, at least the ones you can hear, are in agreement with what Mark was saying. And then John alleges that Mark violated Matthew 18. What is Matthew 18? Matthew 18 talks about how if someone sins against you, you are to go and talk to them privately and if they don't hear you bring another person with you talk to them again if they don't hear you then bring them before the church and they are to be condemned by the church and excluded from fellowship until they repent right that's the the basic idea of matthew 18. the question is should mark have talked to josh about this issue beforehand if they were having a conversation for 30 minutes before he came out to speak to the conference the people in the conference should Mark have talked about it? Does this fall under Matthew 18? In my opinion, it does not. This was a public decision that John made to have this person come. And Mark chose a public venue to criticize the decision. It was a public decision. And it was public, publicly displayed. And Mark's heart, you can see in this, in Mark heart, humbly Steph. went on one knee Steph, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you speak, Steph. But just, just remember to consider his heart, Steph. His heart. I, I am, I am, uh, I am deeply oh, there you moved go. You're good, you're good. by. Yeah, I am deeply moved by his um, impassioned plea to bring everything to God in prayer. 
um, and and uh, governing uh, the behavior according to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which is just total bullshit, Jesus. I mean, I'm taking the gloves like, off. It, 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 people just come on, you know. It, it's it's it, it's it reminds me of that guy biblically who was just so biblically. It's so that the pole dancing was not in the Bible, and it's like what the, it, it, I oh, I think the person we were listening to on Danny's channel today was biblically. I need some of y'all to go to Phil Talk, listen to Danny argue with this moron, and tell me that that is not biblically talking quietly i really think it was and i kept saying ask this person if they make love to god ask this person if they make love to god and i know if you're sitting there reading that in the chat you must be like jay what are you on today and i'm like no i'm very unfortunately i'm talking about a person who very seriously says they make love to god my my question my question has always been as regards to ultimated the Lord says Christian it is guy, done. The Lord says was, it is done. Does his arm fall asleep when, when he's speaking? Well, never mind. I just, <laughs> you know, just I, I've got a terrible, I've got a filthy mind, and I'm going to hell. I know it, but it's the it's the sword swallowing. It's it's uh, you know it's it. definitely it's definitely got the energy peak and stood on on one knee on his conviction that that was inappropriate and unwise and in the spirit of jezebel um a person who goes against god uh, whether you agree with the you know this is the asherah pole and like the metaphor itself I think Mark it's handles a this. Fucking performance. If, if he feels Dumb strongly shit. about that and wants to speak against it, I think he did it in the best possible of ways. All right, let me. And Asher a poll. I mean, really? Yeah, seriously. That's a, that's a, that's a you weird. Know, you can't. You can't. Uh, well, you're so stuck in your stupid book. You can't look outside of it. It's not. You know, not everything has to relate to this verse or that verse in the. Bible, dude. It's a, it's an entertaining, it's an entertainment piece. It's like you. Did anybody bitch about the monster trucks? No. Did anybody bitch about it, it, the guy was doing a sword swallowing act and dancing on a pole? And apparently, it's a, it's a, 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 a piece of Chinese acrobatics. And and I'm just, what I, I don't understand. I don't mm. understand why these folks have to get pissed off <clears throat> about a guy putting on a performance it's because okay. every everything in their worldview comes back to jesus it would be cliche to say that they sound like a broken i'm record. sick of all these little baby christians that they're like oh let's stop fighting so you know what i realized it's they actually sound like they sound like um they sound like when you got a hoopty and a winner and you can't and you can't get it started and you're going out and you go to work and you turn the key and it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> so like Jesus, this... Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's, that's it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I'll tell you I'll tell you to some degree what I think could be happening. Uh a thousand years ago, I did stand up comedy. And um I I I'm not I'm not like the most hilarious guy. So I did sort of a Stephen Wright kind of comedy. You had to think about what I was saying. It wasn't just simply funny um, to general audiences. So every joke got laughs, but sometimes only three or four, two or three, or even one person laughed. And I got frustrated because I thought, well, I thought this would be more well-received. Here's why I was wrong. I should have been happy that those three or four, even the one person laughed. And if you take enough of those three and four, one and two people out of groups, you can fill Notre Dame Stadium with those people and they're paying customers, right? Driscoll <clears throat> knows that if he, and this is what Trump does, let me reach the offended peoples. Mm. who will pay me good money 
to keep them upset by talking about the things that upset them and never fixing any of it. All I got is talk about it. So Driscoll knows there's probably 4% of that audience he can, he can take with him. 2% of that are scared to walk out in front of other people, but they're going to be subscribing to Mark Driscoll, uh, you know, before they even get back to their hotel room. What's interesting like is what's interesting is how many people were at play. So the thing that one of the thing I, I I like to think is that you know we you know they're all in there hooting hollering and they're all going along with it and they're having a good time. <laughs> but let's say that there's some there's some percentage of them that were just totally fine with it, thought it was great. This is the best thing I've ever seen at a Christian conference ever. Um, mm -hmm. And there was there was another percentage that was like. Um, you know, as soon as they they saw him put the sword in his mouth or take his shirt off, they were they were like, nope. Um, I wonder how many people were sort of in play in the sense that they were maybe not upset or not thinking about it or not too bothered by it. But then when Driscoll came up and rebuked the person, then they felt compelled to revisit this the situation. I don't know. Yeah, it's difficult to know. That's what I'm curious I, I, about, though. I, I There are things that make us angry in retrospect, right? We don't see what was offensive when mm -hmm. or hear mm -hmm. what was offensive because we just simply weren't trying to pick up on it. We were trying to enjoy ourselves, right? Or we're trying to learn something. So um, I think it's just one of those moments where most people probably were perfectly happy, excuse me, to watch what that guy was doing and be impressed by his athleticism. That guy, I heard that minister who ran that conference speak. That guy, uh, the athlete, sword swallower, he, he's, he's a Christian. He's married. He has a family. Uh, I forget what he does for a career other than, or he might do something other than sword swallowing. I can't remember who it was said. But either way, that guy's there to do a job. They don't have, uh, you know, Buster Rhymes playing in the background as he's doing all that stuff or, uh, you know, some white snake song playing where he's trying to be all seductive. That's not what we see. It's he's clearly displaying his athleticism. And as, as Stephanie did, right? Stephanie made connections about how, although Stephanie's joking, uh, about how you could draw some spiritual references to what he is doing, right? Um, and I think we probably all could. So if a person, thinks it's bad like Driscoll does, then he can convince other people who don't see what he's seeing. They're watching the same thing and, and they just didn't take it that way. He can now turn some of those people to see it his way, right? I need you to be offended too because I'm offended and I'm gonna take you with me on a journey of being constantly offended by nearly everything that goes on in society. In society. So, yeah, so the sword swallower, the, in the sword swallower's words, got this, this uh, uh, here's a quote from the from this guy Magala, who apparently is a sword swallower. The okay. sword swallower, however, said he felt compelled to clarify that his performance was not a strip act, but a specialty act. My performance, which some have controversially likened to inappropriate entertainment, is deeply rooted in a historical and cultural tradition that dates back over 1,200 years, he mm. said. It has since become a respected discipline showcasing human strength and agility. And I would say that that's about accurate. Now, yeah. Watching the act, uh, the sword swallower also <clears throat> holds a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And uh, he said uh, only an uninformed person would compare his act to an inappropriate performance. Mm -hmm. You know, I just... It, it, I feel that this danger act is perfect for the Stronger Men's Conference. It provides inspiration to the audience and permission for them to reach new heights of what's possible in their lives. It's like, okay. It, yeah, it's, that's it. That's it. Sounds that's reasonable. A person, yeah, that's a person who's got professional and recreational interest in that skill set. And there's, you know, I, I can't imagine a, a lot of maybe even different cultures having uh mm. traditions around i i hadn't pole dancing i had seen this acrobatics. one before. magala pointed out that dan meyer leader of the get this 
Sword Swallowers Association International. There we go. Yep. And his mentor is a member of Driscoll's Church. Really? <laughs> it's a small world. <laughs> yeah, Yikes. Chinese pole acrobatics, which he performed at the Olympics, he says, is way different than a male stripper. It's like, yeah, what the fuck? Big yikes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is super interesting. And I'm going to just say this. I said this last night in Gather. I'm not, you know, I don't get down with men like that, but y'all, if I, if I was, I would give Homeboy a try. Okay? All right? <laughs> and, and, and like I said, if, 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 somebody, if somebody I like swallowed a whole sword, I would be like, you need help? I'm, I'm going to walk you to your car. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of dangerous <laughs> people out here. So look, what am I trying to say? If you have that man's skill set, I sure hope you had a spirit of Jezebel. Because if not, it's a goddamn waste of talent. I'm going to just say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> he was humble, and yet he was truthful. He did not shy away from the truth. He was not passive about it. He was not aggressive about it. He was assertive. And I think that's he handled himself as well as someone could, especially even after he was called to get off of the stage. Now, was Mark out of line for criticizing someone else's event? There could be a debate there. Uh, you agreed to come to the event. It's not your event. You are there to, to contribute a service, and that is to speak to the people. But he, he disagreed with that, that decision. Now, what in the world was the point of a sword swallowing performance by a male stripper, though, at a men's what was the point of the Christian conference. Card monster truck. That's my right. question. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point, Stephanie. Yeah, that's a great point. Because you know, it's that entertainment. Is the, He's trying to entertain entertainment. the folks, and that's the folks the were eating it up like it was ice cream Sometimes until this god bothered got up on the stage and started and saying it's all world. Jezebel. Touch. I, I hate to say this too, like there's again, they're trying to play everything on hard mode. They're so out of touch with the realities of the situation. Um, like, like, like I'll, I'll give you a basic thing. Most people go to church for the worship experience. Most people go to church for the worship experience. What do most pastors think? Most pastors think people go to church to hear them preach. They don't. <laughs> that's interesting i never that's interesting okay uh, i'm not saying nobody does they love their pastor they will they will swear up and down he has just got the voice of the lord but trust me they're there for the worship when people go to these conferences they go because it's fun why do why does anybody go to any conference right and like i've been to these conferences they're really fun but if if you went as like just a, a an observer you would see it's like a whole bunch of say like youth from like different college ministries or youth ministries from across the country and a bunch of internationals they come together they rent out a convention center they have literally like a big concert style worship thing like every afternoon and an even bigger one at night and then that's not even the concerts they'll be like like actual couple like Oh no, no this, those were worship services. This is a concert. <laughs> like, um, and then the rest of the time, what? They're in workshops, they're hanging out, they're walking around town, going to an eatery. You know, it's it's literally the same thing that draws somebody to Comic Con or a wrestling convention. Like, it's the same thing I wish they would do at science conferences because they actually sit there and do goddamn science presentations all day. And then people go get drunk. Um, but, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's, they're crazy to not understand that this is what draws people in. And they knew that. And that that's why they did the fire truck and the performative things. And, you know, they thought the, the bigger, badder, the better. But then when there's backlash, there's this way in which they go into this mode in which they're not, I think, honest with themselves about the, the value and the role of entertainment in the experience. Yeah, it seems like uh, uh, the Driscoll guy who was complaining about the whole thing just wants to have that, oh, it's that white bread church service that we're gathered all here for to praise the Lord and, and sit in the pew and be silent and all of that stuff. And it's almost like 
if you've never been to a, any sort of charismatic gather where people hoot and holler and get up and get down and go amen and all that other stuff, it's like, well, this is this is disgraceful. You know, it's, why? It's just it's it's not church, dude. The other thing I'd always, yeah, the other thing I'd always, I'd always feel like people, and especially people in ministry never have a hard time accepting is you're not winning a lot of souls from Sunday to Sunday. Um, For the most part, the people that are here that are at something like this are people that are already deeply committed. And so... To me, it's like they they always lose sight that you you can take a break from the you've got to understand what to believe and how to walk in the life and da 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 and just have a that you're just amongst family. It's a Christian men's conference. Presumably, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people here are already Christians. They're already dedicated their life to Christ. They're they're here to enhance their dedication of their life to Christ. Can they just have a good time for a, for a few minutes? You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Well, it's a safe space. Let's be honest. It's a safe space. Um, yeah. They won't refer to it that way. So you, the expectation is that everything I see here, if I bring my seven-year-old son, he doesn't have, I don't have to worry about what he sees. I'm not going to be answering questions that make me uncomfortable. You know, well, I mean, if, if the kids read the Bible, then I would. But, um, you know, I think that's, that's the idea. And Driscoll, again... He can use that to his advantage to win over audience members like oh a line was crossed here the spirit of jezebel he doesn't talk about jezebel you know he doesn't yeah, say anything exactly. about it you don't learn yeah. you don't learn anything about jezebel it's just a name that people remember from the Bible. yeah um steph did you uh want to jump in here uh we're looking at uh i think we're looking at the bay also i want you to uh let the people know what you got coming up at five i think uh wait a minute am i muted no you're unmuted but you're i'm unmuted but i'm i'm invisible Let there me get you go visible oh again. bam flashy uh yeah i i was just typing into uh my chat over there uh coming up at uh five o'clock I mean, I'm, you you guys keep on going but join join us over at the transpositions uh on youtube where I will be talking with a pickleballer, professional pickleballer. We'll be talking about um, talking about the life in sport, as uh, particularly as a trans person these days. And so that that should be really fun. So check that out. Um, and I'm I'm here for like ten minutes more, and let's just keep rolling this. Yeah, let's uh, laugh yeah, let's let's wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're fine. I think we'll go and uh, and we'll, hey, Bree, we'll drop there. a drop a link if you could in into the into the chat to the to the program. That yes, be please, great. that'd be great. I don't I don't know what we were trying to accomplish with this. Um, there's been other instances with this particular conference and getting critici- criticized for the things that they've done to uh, get people's attention. Um, but some some thoughts that I have and lessons for pastors and church leaders and just Christians overall. I think in this, you see a, a picture of what is of, of humility and kind of in a surpri- from a surprising source. And you see a picture of arrogance, you know, a picture of humility and a picture of arrogance. Mark says this was not a rebuttal of a person but this was an observation. That's his opinion. Like that's what he can, he can hold. John decided that where Mark was going with his conversation, with his talk was so offensive that he had him get off stage. He wanted to control the narrative so much that he had him get off stage. Now as the conference, you know, leader, that's his, that's his right. He has the right to do that. Was it wise? It came across as arrogant. It, especially to then come on stage and assert Matthew 18 <clears throat> uh, was what Mark should have done. Because it is. If, if you're in Mark's shoes and your issue is what everyone at the conference would have just witnessed and you want to pastor them on some level, then the issue is not necessarily with the person who organized the conference. The issue was now... 
in a public setting, what do you do with that? And so I don't, I don't disagree with what he did. Um, it shows you, Mark showed you how to stand on the convictions even when it costs you something. He disagreed. He disagreed. And he at least stood his ground and, and was courageous in that fact. So when it comes to what do we do with this, I think as leaders, we have to be wise with he stood with his ground and, and was of the events we're doing. What are we uh, what are we actually trying to accomplish with this? It seems as though this was a decision that was made. A, hey, this would be cool. Guys would really think this is awesome. Man, this dude swallowed a sword. That's really awesome. But then what is that accomplishing? I'm curious from your standpoint. Leave a comment. Do you agree with the decision to have this former male stripper be a part of this conference and do what it did? And then do you agree with Mark on, on criticizing it? Let me know. I would love to hear so, from you. Let me know. In the so it, Jesus famously hung out with prostitutes. Right. He didn't judge them allegedly. for having that lifestyle. Alle yeah. Allegedly he existed at all. He, he talked to me. I don't think he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, fiction in the, uh, fictional as the tooth fairy. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think this is, this is not a tough one, but I think they just need something to talk about. And this, this guy in Driscoll or these two guys in Driscoll are just a flavor of the, of the week. This is, yeah, and I think you're right. And I think that there's a, there's a segment of particularly the religious right, the, the Christian nationalist religious right that just is hooked on outrage. They, they need to have the outrage. And even if it's just plain fun, even if it's, even if it's just a, a monster truck or a sword swallower or somebody displaying uh, athletic competence in one way or another, it's like, oh, well, that's terrible. That's against the word of God and all of this stuff. And it's just, it's, it's nonsense. Uh, it, to it, it's like it's taking the place of of uh, transubstantiation for these people. You know, you can't have your heart warm unless you're all pissed off, and you know that, because that you feel something poisonous. It is, it is. Yeah, but it that's is. the key. That's the key to having it work. You make them feel something. Pocket Locker alluded to. Uh, the worship experience is more valuable to some parishioners than the sermon is. Well, that's that's a pretty striking uh, observation, but I, I think it's absolutely the truth. Because, look, people have a Bible. A lot of people have a Bible at home. You have the Bible at yeah, home. Right, but all those right, wonderful right. people that you get to see and enjoy, um, your friendships and relationships with your fellow church members, you may not have that at home. You may never see those people outside of that Sunday or whatever midweek service you have because you're all so busy. You know, you all have your own lives. Yeah, I mean, and think about your own experiences like like school, like what's what's better, like sitting in a lecture hall, listening to your professor drone on at you or like the once in a while where your school you know, did something fun or entertaining that you actually wanted to participate, whether it was like a concert or they put on a show or they did something like that. It's the participatory thing. It's fun. Everybody's engaged together. Uh, obviously, that's going to be more engaging than people just like sitting there, just taking notes, flipping between Bible verses. Um, so, the, yeah, but Steph, I think you hit it right on the head. I, the, th the thing I was thinking overall about where, what what this conflict seems to highlight is that increasingly the the sort of branding and the marketing and the 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 outward facing thing of the 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 christian right is moving more and more towards the rogan spear i think of it as that sort of toxic masculinity type of stuff um and this is where those two things they 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 come and because they they do something like this which they think is sword strong strength all this other stuff and then these other guys are going wait you're supposed to get angry about pole dancing 
Right. Wait, we're not yeah. supposed to let people swallow phallic things in front of on state. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they they it's like they caught themselves uh reminding and, somebody's reminding we're supposed to be angry about these aesthetics, right? And and yeah, it's just then you get the the outrage. Well, I can I can make everything look, I'm a creative guy. I any it doesn't matter what they put up there, I can tell you why it's bad for what they're trying to do. But I can tell you why it's good for what they're trying to do. One last thing before sure, I go sure. that that strikes me is um, uh, this Driscoll guy was at great pains to to highlight his persecution, you know, uh, the the wickedness of the Jezebel and all of this and and the and how put upon he was to be subjected to watching a guy climb a pole with a sword down his throat. And, you know, at, at that display, I mean, he just had to be offended and, and felt persecuted by the very nature of the performance, which is just so stupid. And I think it's, we should also say too, just, you know, while we wrap up that like, let's not forget that this is rooted in bigotry, right? That the reason that they're so angry about these particular aesthetics and these particular things is again, rooted in their sort of, you know, more global anti-woke agenda, right? That, that it's right. hatred that's motivating their outrage rather even yeah. than some sort of I'll, doctrinal objection. I'll bet you that no one, but no one went to sleep during that guy's act. <laughs> <laughs> not even they Trump. They were all watching that no, thing. Yeah. They, not they, even they Trump. were woke as fuck when they, when they were watching that guy's act. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, and, and they were all applauding, you know, and, until the next day. Well, I've been praying all night. And uh, that, the reason my voice is a is because I was, I was pleading with God to show me the way to right. talk to <laughs> Congress. And that just, it's terrible. It's just, I'm praying so hard for all of you sinners who had to watch a guy do something kind of cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so stupid. I got to go, but th yeah, thanks yeah. so much, uh, Pocket Thank Larkin, you, for having thanks me so much. on. Thanks so much. My back black on. friend, it was great being here today. And, and yes, uh, thank you. Was, uh, jump on over to the, the transpositions. And, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll be over there at five. Your, after your thing. So Enjoy. Right, see you. Thanks, Steph. See you. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, my one black friend, uh, do you want to give us your closing thoughts? You know, uh, ministry is probably harder than than I'll ever know, right? The the guy who ran that conference has a hard job. What do we show people? They know what the overall message is. They're trying to reinforce um, it's okay to have your masculinity, be Christ centered, uh, and you can still enjoy your life. But the focus ultimately is on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, a monster truck, sir, I can draw analogies to where that's relevant. Um, the performer there, the Bible says, take care of your body. There's all these things, you know, that I could draw that are positive about it. Plus the fact that the guy himself, the performer is a Christian. I don't see anything wrong with highlighting someone like that in your ministry. Because if we didn't know what he did and he just went up there and talked like it was a, a TED conference and never got up on the pole, right? If it was just something like that, you could still learn something from the guy. It's not a total write-off. But sadly, we live in a time where there's a lot of outrage culture. And that's what's popular. If you could piss people off and, again, keep them entertained keep them angry because you get a reaction out of them and there's all these chemicals flowing through the body when they do get that reaction it just devolves we're circling the drain america we are circling the drain and it and and it just it makes them look silly it just brings out the yeah. silly it just they look very very silly it's not a serious problem um mm -hmm. It's not a real problem, but yeah, they they kind of brought it on themselves, and they're kind of well, you know, 
uh, it reminds me of that that graph of the 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 serpent, you know, eating its own tail and getting yeah. ready to consume itself. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, all right, appreciate y'all. Uh, this has been a great time. Uh, Want to thank Stephanie again Definitely. for joining us. Um, somebody dropped the link to the the transpositions because um, I don't think I have that on the channels yet i need to add it uh let me see let me see let me get a link to that so i can drop that real quick and i have to learn what pickleball is well there tune in at five i know this this is my chance this is is my chance uh here we go all right i got it yeah and youtube punk dropped it and here's the actual video too all right appreciate y'all um Mm -hmm. as always take care of yourselves and each other we'll see